Commander Masters previews are here. It's full of reprint suite legends, big spells, and Commander Draft. But how does that work again? And what are some new preview cards you should know about? Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Vray from Wizards of the Coast, and Commander Draft is one of my favorite ways to play, and one a lot of people haven't experienced before. Plus, even if you have, there's a twist to expect in Commander Masters. But okay, how does this work again? Let's dig in. So in a normal draft, you start with three packs at a table of seven other people. You open a pack, take one card, pass the rest, and grab what was passed to you. Rinse and repeat. Commander Draft is very similar, but has a few key differences. You start with three packs still, but keep in mind that Commander Masters packs are 20 cards apiece. The big difference though is this. You draft two cards at a time. Ever seen a pack with two cards you can't choose between? Well, problem solved. This helps you select combinations of cards and synergies for your deck together, plus makes the draft process faster to boot. So if you want to take, say, a legend and a card that works with it out of the same pack, great. At the end of the draft, you're going to be building a 60 card deck. You can take as many basic lands as you want to add into your deck as well. Now it is a commander deck. So your deck is going to have a commander, or in the case of partner, commanders, and those are a part of your 60 card deck. Your deck also has to follow color identity rules. So everything in your deck must match the colors of your commanders. And you're going to be playing four player multiplayer afterward. So keep in mind the cards you want might vary a bit from normal. One unexpected thing, might be how many copies of a card you can play in your deck. Card limits just don't apply in draft. In a normal draft, you can play five lightning bolts if you draft them. And in commander draft, you can play three soul rings if you draft them. And hey, that sounds sick if you pull it off. You usually won't have many duplicates, but it can come up and it's good to know. Once you've built your deck, you're just playing regular commander. 40 life, commander tax, free mulligan, and all. Now. There is one other special thing for Commander Masters to keep in mind, the partner rule. Commander Masters has a special draft rule. In this set, just for Commander Draft, you can play all legends that are only a single color identity or no color identity at all, as though they had partner. For example, Rishkar and Piana, two preview cards that are in this set, yep, they're here and can team up together. This was a solution we found to make the draft format work with all reprints. And it turns out it's pretty fun too. It creates team ups like you've never seen before. And it's often a lot of fun making these wacky combinations. And if for any reason, you really can't find the legend in a color you need, you can always use the Prismatic Piper. It's available just like a basic land. That said, I've almost never seen anybody need to use this. It's mostly just there as an absolute failsafe, just in case. All right, so now let's talk about actually drafting and building your deck. Your final deck is going to want about 25 lands and 35 non-lands. And in general, your commander instincts will serve you well here. It's no surprise that mana ramp and card draw are powerful, but there are a few things you might not expect. First of all, you're going to really want to pay attention to your mana curve. In a normal commander deck, you can get away with being a little all over the place because your decks are normally backed by a ton of early game ramp. And while your commander draft deck might have a couple pieces, it's a far cry from the eight mana rocks that a lot of decks start with. If you're not familiar with the idea of a mana curve, the idea is that you want cards to play at all stages of the game. A good mix of cards at each mana cost so you draw them in the right proportions. For this exercise, ignore things like removal spells you're unlikely to play on curve. You'll play a two mana creature or mana rock on turn two, but not a two mana removal spell. For Commander Masters, I would recommend something that looks roughly like this. For two drops, six to eight. For three drops, five to seven. For four drops, four to six. For five drops, two to five. And for six drops, two to three. Keeping in mind that, once again, this does not count your non-creature spells you're not playing on curve. And there are plenty of exceptions. 
it's just a good general guide. Also, keep in mind where your commander sits on the curve. If your commander costs four, for example, you can do with fewer four drops because you'll always have access to your commander when you hit four mana. And also, because it's commander, you can expect to get up to those big drops. You still don't want tons of them, but you can expect to cast an eight drop sometime. Like the reprint, Ulamog's Crusher. Bam, preview card. This card is back and ready to annihilate your opponent's permanence. Okay, second major point now. There's going to be more creature combat than you're probably used to in Commander. So things like combat tricks are way more powerful than normal. And because the board can get full of creatures, evasion mechanics like flying or ways to bust through a board stall can be critical, such as this preview card, Rogue's Passage. Fitting into your mana base, it helps make sure you can push through an attacker late game or even get political by targeting other players' attackers too. And while there are some board sweepers, there probably won't be as many as in a normal commander game. So your creatures are a touch safer too. Third, you need to think about your mana a bit more. Your mana base is going to be mostly basic lands. Especially if you end up grabbing a three color legend like the Carador, you're going to want some fixing. Drafting some lands that fix your colors can be a nice move. Like five of our preview cards, the Thriving Lands, all of which are back in this set. You'll usually end up with more than enough playables, so lands are great picks you can afford making that will make your deck run smoother. And of course, it's also key to look for synergy, which speaking of, let's talk draft archetypes. Every two color pair in Commander Masters has an archetype. Of course, there are a lot of sideways decks you can draft two in this format, so you won't always be one of these, but it's a good handhold to grab onto. Let's start with white blue. It's all about artifacts. Go wide with artifacts and get bonuses for doing so. Moving on to blue black, this is a fun one. Graveyard and reanimator. You can do some typical graveyard stuff like flashback, but there are some nice reanimation spells to grab and bring things back. Black red is sacrifice be aggressive and sacrifice your extra creatures for bonuses. Red green is power matters. Get creatures with big power and reap those rewards. Green white is counters. Go wide and spread counters to your creatures. White black is tokens. Make tokens and then either pump them up while going wide or sacrifice them for value. Black green is a slower token stack. You slowly grind your opponent away by making lots of tokens in the long game. And in the meantime, you can use them to hit Morbid or Sacrifice. And on occasion, there's a fun Sapperling deck to draft too. Green blue is ramp. Yes, again, but come on, ramping and drawing cards. What else could you possibly want to do in Commander? Win the game? Psh. Blue red is spells. Cast spells, get triggers, and win games. And rounding things out, red white, is equipment. Get bonuses for suiting your creatures up. As previews go on, you can keep these in mind. I'm trying something new this time by doing my archetype coverage early in preview season, so this way you can see what cards you might want to keep your eyes out for as they're previewed. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this more or less than my usual method. Now let's use one of these archetypes to talk about one of my biggest draft tips. You ready for this? One of the largest pieces of advice I always give drafters is that you want to draft a deck, not just a pile of cards. What I mean by this is that when drafting, you're going to have to choose between good cards in your colors. If you just pick the one that looks the best in a vacuum each time, you're going to end up with some good cards, but ones that don't necessarily synergize together. Let me walk you through an example and preview some new cards in the process. Let's imagine you've drafted two commanders you're excited about, Rishkar and Piana, who I mentioned earlier. You've got to pick between Battle Screech, now finally printed at common, and Sky Shroud Claim. Two new preview cards. Which do you pick? They're both good cards, and in a traditional commander sense, people would probably favor the claim. But this is a deck that with the commanders really wants to go wide and have creatures. On the flip side, you're probably not playing as many big spells that you need to ramp up to in this kind of deck. So I'd definitely take the Screechier. What about this one? Elysian Caryatid or Cartographer's Hawk. Now don't shift it to Uncommon, by the way. This one is closer, and I certainly couldn't fault either one. But the Hawk is an evasive creature who 
can pump up with your commanders, and in a go-wide deck, you're a little less likely to hit the bonus on the Karyatid. Okay, one more. Kurtar's Wrath, now downshifted to Uncommon, or Elite Scale Guard. These are both very powerful white cards, and it's going to really depend on your deck. But Scale Guard is likely to be a lot better in this deck. It can tap down blockers so easily, and your deck wants sweepers less since you're likely to be filling up the board. Thinking like this, and the context of what kind of deck you're making, will hopefully point you in the right direction for your picks. Okay, so let's recap what's going on here with Commander Draft. First, make a pod of between four and eight people. And if you draft with more than five, you can break into two games afterward. While drafting, draft two cards at a time. Then build a 60 card commander deck with about 25 lands and 35 non-lands. And keep in mind, your commanders are included in that number. You can play more than one copy of a card. And in Commander Masters, you can treat mono and zero colored legends like they have partners. Keep draft archetypes in mind while drafting, and be sure to check for your mana curve and prioritize ways to break through board stalls. And then you play your deck using normal commander rules. And of course, most of all, have fun. If you get the chance to play commander draft, either at home or at your local game store, I hope these tips help you out and you have a blast. And crush your enemies too. I'll talk with you again soon. And until then, may you get past bomb rares. You got this. Annecy is in France, and it's one of the most gorgeous places I've ever been to for a Magic tournament. I took the bus down from Geneva and was immediately blown away. In fact, so much so that I decided to do this tour where a local drove me and one other person who signed up for it in this awesome old car, see the Lake Annecy from all directions. We zoomed up roads and enjoyed the breeze and caught the view. 